In this short video, we're going to learn two important limits involving trig functions. Why are we going back to trig functions and limits? Well, we need to know the derivative of the trig functions. So for example, what would be the derivative of the sine function? Well, before we even try to answer that, let's do a little review. If I have a segment of the unit circle here, why is that unit circle? Because the radius equals one. Now this is also a radius. This radius is going to equal one. If the central angle is theta, then remember that the length of this arc in radians is also theta. And if I pick any point on the unit circle, it's going to have an x coordinate and a y-coordinate. And if I remember, if I draw this right triangle, and remember my ratios from triangle trigonometry, that sine of theta is opposite of hypotenuse, which would be y over 1, or just y. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, and so that is just going to be x over 1, or simply x. And just for completeness, tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. which will be uh, y over x. We also want to review the angle sum formulas. Uh, the one that we're really interested in is the sine of the sum a plus b. That's sine of a times cosine b plus cosine a sine of b. We may also need cosine of a plus b. That's cosine of a times cosine of b minus sine of a times sine of b. So now let's use the limit definition of the derivative and see what we come up with in terms of the derivative for sine of x. So I start with just sine of x plus h minus sine of x all over h, and I'm going to take the limit as h goes to zero. Now I'm going to expand sine of x plus h using that sum formula that we just reviewed. So now I have the limit as h goes to zero of sine of x times cosine h plus cosine of x times sine of h minus sine of x all over h. I like to break that into two terms, two different limits. The first one is going to come from the middle term here. I'm going to have the cosine x times sine h in the numerator all over h. 
And then the second limit, I'm going to take the two remaining terms. So I'll have the limit as h goes to 0, sine x cosine h minus sine x all over h. Now, in this definition, x is a fixed number. And so it does not change with h. So I could go ahead and factor out in the first limit cosine of x in front of the limit. And I'm left with the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of h over h. And in the second limit, I have sine of x in front of the limit times the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine of h minus 1 all over h. So these limits, again, I'm not interested in the cosine of x, that's outside of the limit. So the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of h over h is one of the limits we want to explore in this video. And the second limit is the limit as h approaches 0 of the cosine of h minus 1 all over h. So we'll start. I'm going to replace the h with theta. So I'm going to start with the limit as theta goes to 0, sine of theta over theta. Now, I can't use the limit laws here. They really, I can't replace uh, theta with 0. And I don't see any identity or algebraic tool that could help me simplify this. But I still have the squeeze theorem. So let's see if we can remember how to use the squeeze theorem. The idea in the squeeze theorem is we want to sandwich our target function between two other functions and their limits on the above and below are all going to be the same thing as theta goes to zero. So let's go back to our unit circle. What did I say? I said that if I have a central angle of theta, then the arc length is the same as theta. And we saw that this line segment here, the y-coordinate of that point, is just sine of theta. Well, this line segment y is clearly shorter than the length of the arc there. So one thing I can say is that sine of theta is less than theta. All right, well, that helps a little bit. Um, but that only gives me uh, sine of theta on one side. Now let's take that same unit circle and Let's extend the hypotenuse and at the lower end of the arc, let's draw a vertical line to meet that extension of the hypotenuse. So now I've got a new right triangle. It still has the angle theta. And the opposite side here is supposed to be, this is supposed to be a W, so W. And remember that the radius down here is still 1. So tangent of theta here is just that w over 1, which is w. So this w, the length of this tall uh, vertical line segment is tangent of theta. Now this vertical line segment here is longer than the arc, which remember the arc measures theta radians. And so I can say 
that uh, theta is less than tangent of theta. Well, remember that tangent of theta is just sine theta over cosine theta. So this says that cosine theta times theta is less than sine theta. Well, let's put those two together then, because now we're going to sandwich something. I have found that theta times cosine theta is less than sine theta, but sine theta is less than theta. So I can come in here and divide every term by theta, and I'll get cosine theta is less than sine of theta over theta is less than 1. Since that is true, and the limit as theta goes to 0 of cosine theta equals 1. The limit as theta goes to 0 of 1 equals 1. Then by the squeeze theorem, I can say that the limit as theta goes to zero of sine of theta over theta equals one. So we've got one of our limits uh, solved. So that's good. We've got one limit. What about our second limit? Well, this one, we actually don't have to go back to using the squeeze theorem. What I can do is use some trig identities and some algebra and the limit that we just calculated. So what I'm going to do is multiply top and bottom by the conjugate cosine theta plus 1 over cosine theta plus 1. So that will leave me with the limit as theta approaches 0 of cosine squared theta minus 1 all over theta in parentheses cosine of theta plus 1. Now cosine squared theta minus 1, I guess I need to remember that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So cosine squared theta minus 1 is minus sine squared theta. So I can write that as the limit as theta approaches 0 of minus sine squared theta 
over theta, parentheses, cosine theta plus one. And I'm gonna break that into two limits. I'm gonna break it into the product of two limits. The first limit is going to be the limit as theta goes to zero, sine theta over theta. And the second limit is going to be the limit as theta goes to zero of minus sine theta over cosine theta plus one because I can evaluate both of those limits. The first limit, we just found that the first limit equals one. And the second limit, I can use direct substitution because when I put zero in for theta in the denominator, I just get uh, the cosine of zero plus one, which is two. If I put zero in in the numerator, I get zero. And so that's just going to evaluate to zero. And so my second limit then, the limit as theta goes to zero of cosine of theta minus one all over theta equals zero. So now we can actually answer our original question, what is the derivative of sine theta? Well, we just found that the limit as h approaches zero of sine of h over h equals one and the limit as h approaches zero of cosine of h minus one times h, over, not times h, over h is zero. So this would equal cosine of x times one plus sine of x times zero, which equals cosine of x. So the derivative with respect to x of sine of x is cosine of x. Well, I hope you found this video on calculating these two important limits useful and we will make a subsequent video on how to apply those limits.